Hi, this is David Hillier here and I'm going to continue with my videos on corporate finance. Now today I'm going to be speaking about properties of investment portfolios. It's fairly mathematical but what I hope to do is give you some insights into the, the way in which assets, financial assets, come together to create different combinations of expected return and risk. Uh, this is from chapter 10 of my book, Corporate Finance, uh, but it's also covered in my other uh, textbooks as well. So let's start off by carrying on with the examples in previous videos where we have two assets, and the names of those two assets are Supertech and Slowpoke. Now, Slowpoke it has lower risk than Supertech. If you look at this particular graph on the y-axis or the vertical axis you have expected return and on the horizontal axis or the x-axis you have standard deviation. So when you have a point which is to the left and lower down then that is lower risk because you've got lower standard deviation but you also have lower expected return. And if you go towards the right then you have higher standard deviation and higher expected return. Now, Supertech and Slowpoke are two assets. If we were to combine those assets into a portfolio, like we did in the previous video, then we would have a combination of risk, standard deviation, and expected return that wouldn't be the exact same as Slowpoke or, and it wouldn't be the exact same as Supertech. Now, if you look at this square in the, uh, the slide here, that is a portfolio where you're combining Supertech and combining Slowpoke and it's 60% in Supertech and 40% in Slowpoke. It's what we've been using in the previous uh, video. And you'll see that it's what we've not got is we've not got a, a, you know, a straight line here between the two, so you're not seeing uh, the portfolio just simply being a weighted average of the two assets. You're seeing some benefit from the uh, the diversification. If it was a pure weighted average, then the line that would be going up, we would have a portfolio of the same expected return, but a standard deviation round about this point, which is greater than the standard deviation of the portfolio itself. And that is one of the main benefits of creating portfolios from uh, individual assets. We can look at different combinations of weightings between the two assets. Uh, in this case, and this is a case I showed just in the previous slide, you have an investment of 60% of your money in Supertech and 40% of your money in Slowpoke. And so you get a fairly high return because you're investing a lot in Supertech, but uh, you're, you're not getting as low a risk as you would get in Slowpoke. If we were to invest in the two assets equally, then you would see that because you're putting more money into Slowpoke, you're getting a lower expected return, but you're also getting a lower risk as well. And if we were to invest most of our money in Supertech, then 90% in this case, then you're getting a higher return, but you're getting higher risk. This point here is where we're investing 90% in Slowpoke and 10% in Supertech. So in here, we're getting a higher return because we've got 10% of our money in Supertech. That's got higher return. Uh, and we're also getting a lower risk, which means that this investment here has a higher return but lower risk. So that investment here dominates the investment in Slowpoke. And you can get a combination of portfolios, and this is theoretical, That this is just mathematics, you get a combination of the two portfolios where you can minimise your risk. And we call that portfolio where we minimise our risk, the minimum variance portfolio. Now you then might say, well, okay, is this portfolio better than this portfolio? Well, it's difficult to say that. If you knew the answer, I would say no. But, and you'll find out about that in future videos. But this, video, this portfolio has lower risk, but it also has lower return. Expected return. This one has a higher expected return, uh, but a higher risk. So it's difficult at this point in time 
in terms of the course to know which one is better. All we can say is that anything below the the minimum variance portfolio tends to be a bad investment. Now, why would you say that? Well, let's look at this portfolio here. This portfolio has a level of return and it also has a level of standard deviation uh, or level of risk. You can get an exact same portfolio that gives you the same level of risk but a lower expected return. So anything that's here on this frontier will have a, an exact same portfolio with the same level of risk but a much higher return. And so anything that's underneath this minimum variance portfolio in this graph is we would say suboptimal and you should never ever invest in that. And so if you've got two assets, Supertech and Slowpoke, there's no point investing only in Slowpoke. Why? Because for that level of risk, you can have a portfolio of Supertech and Slowpoke that gives you a much higher return. Again, another benefit from creating portfolios. Now, that's just one particular example here and uh, where you have characteristics of one asset and characteristics of another asset coming together to create this relationship for portfolios between expected return and risk. And one of the key factors that determines this relationship is the correlation between the two assets. And if you look at this slide, the next slide, then you can see that in the next slide, what we're doing here is we're looking at the two assets, but we're just changing the correlation. So this this line here is when the two assets are perfectly correlated with each other. That is the straight line that I was talking about at the beginning of this video. When the two assets are perfectly correlated with each other, there is no benefit from creating a portfolio. There is no benefit from diversification. As the correlation drops, it goes to zero, and then it goes to minus one, which is the, the lowest correlation you can get, you see the benefits from diversification are significantly greater. And when the correlation is minus one, there is actually a theoretical portfolio that you can create that will have zero risk. Now, why would you say that? Well, if the correlation is negative one, that means that when one portfolio has a positive return, the other portfolio, or the other asset, sorry, will have a negative return by the same amount, and each of them move in exactly the opposite direction. So you obviously then you're cancelling each other out. So if you can cancel each other out, then investing um, a certain amount in each of the two assets can actually give you a risk which is basically zero. Now, in practice, you might say, well, that will never exist in, in practice. Well, it does because you can have an insurance contract. An insurance contract pays out when you have a loss and it pays out the amount that you've lost. So, boom, you can uh, reduce your risk there. But you can also have hedging, financial risk management. We can use options, other derivatives to take away your risk. So, it is possible in practice to achieve that. But the one thing I would like you to take away from this uh, slide is that the more negative the correlation between the two assets, the lower the risk of the portfolio and the more, in a sense, the more efficient the portfolio is. So if you have two assets that have uh, a correlation of 0.5, then the risk, ben the risk benefits you're going to get are just uh, what you see here. If you've got a correlation which is minus 0.1639, and that is what we had in our example of Supertech and Slowpoke, then you get good benefit there from diversification. And I'll talk a lot about that in future videos. Now, you might then say, now, well, okay, this is all just mathematics. You said it was mathematics. Uh, does you know, how can we extend this and practice this this idea? Well, I've spoken about two assets, uh, Slowpoke and Supertech, but we could actually just as easily say they're two portfolios. We could say they are the port, the, it's the portfolio of all corporate debt and the portfolio of all corporate equity. Or you could even just say the portfolio of all debt and all equity. And so by having those two big portfolios, you could then just treat them as two 
individual assets and have the exact same um, approach to as what we've done uh, previously. Or alternatively, you could say, well, you have one investment in one country and another investment in the rest of the world. And given that the US is the largest uh, country in the largest market, in this slide, I've, I've basically done that. I've said, well, okay, you have the returns, historical returns and risk on the US. So if you invest in the US, um, you will get that risk return profile. And if you invest in everything else, you get that risk return profile. And a portfolio of US stocks and non-US stocks can actually create this relationship between risk and return for a similar portfolio. And this would be an international stock portfolio that you could, um, you could invest in. So, in sum, that is um, a very short video on the properties of investment portfolios. And the main thing is that if you combine assets into a portfolio, you will get benefit from diversification. And in my books, I go through this in a lot of detail, and you can go through the mathematics of that in my books. Thank you very much.